close the study of the graphs of a function by graphing about three different problems. Uh, and actually, they're going to, you know, this one's going to be linear, and I'm going to share a quadratic one with you, and then an exponential one as well, all um, using, um, you know, data uh, for our independent variable x, and we'll find the um, output value for the dependent variable y. This is a problem that involves the consumption of fuel in liters per hour of a certain engine. Determine as a function of the RPMs of the engine. And so the formula is C equals 0.011 R plus 40. And we want to evaluate it between 500 and 3000 RPMs with an increment of 500 going up. So while we could take our calculator 0 0.011 times 500 and add 40 to it. So we could do that. I'm trying to do this where I can see it. Um, 0 0.011 times 500 plus 40 and get an answer of 45.5. And we could do that again with 1,000. We could take 0 0.011 times 1,000 and add 40 to it and get whatever that answer may be. However, it would be so much easier if we just put the formula into our y equals editor. 0.011x, I believe it's plus uh, 40. I've got it covered up with the calculator. And then I'm going to go second table set, and I'm going to ask it to start at 500 and go in increments of 500. You know, again, auto, auto, like we always have. And then second and hit the table key and find out that the consumption would be 45.5 liters per hour at 500 RPMs, 51 at 1,000, 56.562. I have these recorded, so I'm going to go ahead and write them down. So 51, 56.562, 67.5, and 73. And now, I ask you to graph this here on your rectangular coordinate system. And I guess I'll slide up and down um, to look at my data. But what I want you to be careful of is on the x-axis is going to go RPMs between 500 and 3,000 on the x-axis. This is my x column. The answer, my consumption in liters per hour, is a function of the RPMs. This will go on the y-axis. So again, RPMs on the x, consumption on the y. So I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to put little tick, mark, tick marks every an equal distance apart and I'm trying to make these, I can't remember how many I need, I've got 500 RPMs, 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, actually I think I needed to go up to 3,000 so I think I'm good and you must label this in its units, RPMs. Um, you know, uh, you can write revolution, revolutions per minute if you want there, but you must tell me um, what the units are that the x-axis describes. On the y-axis, we have consumption. And I believe that was in liters per hour. I'm going to go ahead and write that, liters per hour. So you must describe your y-axis. And then I'm going to go back here and see what my output looked like. It went anywhere from 45 to 73, not, you know, down to zero. So because, you know, I, I'm going in that window, 45 to 73, I'm going to set up a window that goes from 40 to 70. And I'm going to break the y-axis and just start at 40 so that I can really use up my y-axis to represent the data. So I can kind of stretch it out, if you will. Again, I have my data on another piece of paper. I'm going to scroll here. So at 500 RPMs, we should plot a point at 45.5. So that's about right here. At 1,000 RPMs, we're at 51. 
so right about there, 1,000 RPMs. 1,500 RPMs, we're at 56. So here's 55, maybe 56 for 1,500. Uh, 2,000, we're at 62, so a little bit above 60. 2,500, we're at 67.5. I wish I had grid lines here. It would be much more helpful. 3,000, I'm above 70, at about 73. And you can see the linearness of this representation of this data. I'm trying to draw a straight line through those dots. I did OK. Um, they asked me to graph it from 500 to 3,000. I should not extend. I should not assume that it can go however far beyond 3,000 RPMs. I cannot make that assumption. So I'm going to stop there with no arrowheads. OK, um, good good uh, graph of some data. you got to label your x and y axes. you got to give me even increments. If you don't want to waste space, you can break your axes. I want to do um, another problem that we did earlier. And it was the break. This was, oh, I don't know, a few units a few videos ago, the braking distance of a car was defined by 0 0.037 times its velocity squared. So if we created a table of values for the velocity and picked 0, 10 miles per hour, 20 miles per hour, 30 miles per hour, 40 miles per hour, and then you calculated either by the graphing calculator or did it by hand, so yes, you could take 0 0.037 times 0 squared, which is nothing. And then you could take 0 0.037 times 10 squared. Well, 10 squared is 100, so that one's going to be 3.7. But I'm not going to be able to keep doing this in my head. So I'm going to get my calculator out to do this. So I'm going to put the formula in. And I have 0 0.037 times x squared. I want it to start the table at 0 and go in increments of 10 automatically. I'm going to go second graph key to see the table. There's my first two numbers. I do have these um, jot, jotted down. So I have 14.8 here at 20 miles, 33.3. 59.2, and at 50 miles per hour, it would take you 92.5 feet, the distance, to stop. So when I ask you to graph this data, you must, and this is just so common in the workplace, to need to depict uh, an equation, a formula, a set of data via a picture for a manager. Um, I need you to put the speed of the car, and you know, I didn't say, um, but I'm just going to have to give it some units. So I'm going to say it's in miles per hour. So there's the velocity in miles per hour. And we went um, 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. We could probably go find the piece for 60. So I'll put 10, 20. And then this is the braking distance, so I'm going to come up here and label the y-axis in words. Braking distance, and again, I verbally said that that's in feet, and so we're going to put the units down there in feet. We've got something from 0 to 100 at 50, so I better put maybe 100 right here, therefore, 50 right here. So I sometimes will put my max point up there, then start breaking it in half, so I have a nice equal spacing. So half of that would be 25. Half of be, between 50 and 100 would be 75. You cannot put these exact numbers on here. You've got to put equal increments on your axes. A lot of people will just go 0, 3.7, 14.8, 33.3, .3, 59. That makes your, equate, your picture look linear. But this is a quadratic equation. It should look like this. A quadratic equation should. So let's go ahead and plot the data points. So velocity of 0, no breaking distance. Velocity is 10, only 3.7 feet to stop. I don't even want that to go off the x-axis much. 20 miles per hour, about 14. So that's about a little bit more than halfway here between 0 and 25. 30, I'm at 33, so it's got to be above the 25, above the 25. 40, I'm at 59, so here's 50, here's 75. Maybe 60 is about right here. 
and then 50, I'm way up here at 92.5, and at 60, I'm kind of curious now, at 60, I'm at 133, so way up here somewhere, probably, you know, right right up there, if I, I can't really put the dot, oh, it is there, and then I'll connect the dots, and I'm only going to see one side of this parabola, I'm not seeing this other side of this parabola because this would represent negative speed. So you know back to talking about domain, the domain of this function when I went to pick numbers to put in is values that uh, our velocity would be greater than or equal to zero and you know there really is probably some limitation but I don't know what kind of car this is so I'm not going to pick it but it could be a, a race car and so it could be up in the 200 miles per hour and the range is also something uh, so the braking distance is something greater than or equal to zero because all these y values came out to be Again, zero if you have no speed and you have some distance to stop based on your velocity. So, you know, really important to understand this concept so you can do this with the applications. Going to call it good and we're going to use graphing of functions to solve equations next.